and that is going to be the second of the two terms. And so in the that means in the final solution here, I have y, which is y1 added to y2. I add these things together. And then I think about it as a step or converting these step functions into piecewise functions. And so the first thing I see is that for t values that are less than a, the system's doing nothing. I haven't struck it with the hammer yet. Now for t between a and b in time, the system takes on its sinusoidal oscillations. But then when t becomes greater than or equal to b, I've loaded the system up and I pick up the second term now which says, oh, I pick up more oscillations. And if I were to look at what would happen here, here is the time interval 1 from 0 to pi. So I'm going to choose my little a to be equal to pi. And I'm going to choose my little b to be equal to 3 pi. And so for the first pi seconds, nothing's going on. Now, for the second interval of time between pi and 3 pi, a sinusoidal oscillation turns on. And then from 3 pi onward, after I load up the system with an extra mass, or I could think about it as just tugging down on the system constantly with a downward force, what do I see? I see oscillations about a new equilibrium value. All right, and here are these oscillations between 0 and 2. So after b, t equal b. And then before we had oscillations for t less than b but greater than or equal to a. So the Dirac function is like a pulse of energy to the system, which can take a system that's not moving and, and bring it into motion. It's almost as if you gave it an initial condition of some instantaneous velocity at that point. And then we have the step function, which allows um, different sorts of loads, different sorts of forces to be applied at different times. And in this case, what we see is that it changes the, the equilibrium point about which everything oscillates.